Study Arata. According to the learning pyramid, the most effective way to learn is by teaching someone else or by trying to put into action what you just learned right away. Because people retain 90% of what they learn when they're teaching another person or when they're using the information immediately, 75% of what they learn when they practice what they learned, 50% of what they learn when they are participating in some type of a group discussion, 30% of what they learn when they attend a lecture, 20% of what they learn when they are having some type of audiovisual sources, and 10% what they learn through reading and to make things worse. Only 5% of what they learn from a lecture. Isn't that impressive? Unfortunately, the learning pyramid has no solid scientific backing. In the second part of this video, we're going to conduct a more detailed review, but before we criticize it, let's think, what can we learn from this model? They say that a wise person is able to find lessons even in low quality material, and a fool can't learn anything even from the best material in the world. So let's take a stand for wisdom and investigate what can we learn today. Although it is not a scientifically proven model, there is a useful lesson that we can take advantage of from this learning pyramid. When you try to learn something without putting a lot of effort, this is trying to learn passively. It happens when you just quickly glance through your study material without reflecting on it, without trying to put it into practice. And if you do this, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage in learning. And one way to actively learn is by teaching someone or trying to immediately put into practice what you've learned. Try teaching the information that you receive and then you will realize it is not easy. You might even make a few mistakes. And this is because the interpretation of the work varies from the writer or the speaker and your interpretation. You just interpreted what they said. And often our interpretation is not 100% accurate. These mistakes are a good thing because they let you identify your problem areas so you can work on them. So then you can force your brain to focus on those specific points. Listening to or reading something passively is just reading. It's just listening. It is not real learning. Real learning comes from making mistakes. The mistakes come from the implementation, the use of that information. And that is why a lot of people struggle to learn. Because they refuse to make mistakes. Just reading passively or sitting around watching a class, that is a way to avoid making mistakes. Critique of the learning pyramid. A lot of people support and propagate this theory of the learning pyramid. Just take a quick look on the internet. You're going to find multiple websites supporting and repeating this idea. What we're calling here learning pyramid is actually an accumulation of several different models related to different degrees of information retention. You can find something similar in similar models with other words such as learning cone, cone of experience, retention cone, or retention pyramid. However, there is no scientific evidence to support the claims and the numbers of this pyramid. Worse yet, the numbers directly contradict much of what we know from scientific research about the process of learning. The information in the learning pyramid is generalist. It is simplistic. There is no record showing that people learn always in a better way in this sequence or in these particular numbers. There is also no evidence that content from an audiovisual source is always learned better than the content from written materials. So, aside from the fact that the numbers are not based on scientific research, the most important thing for us is to remember that people are different. We can't assume that the learning pyramid or whatever model that we want to use to measure uh, people's learning curves would be valid for everybody. 
the ease of remembering and the liveliness of the memories of the situations in which the learning occurred don't necessarily correlate or represent how we actually learned. For example, you might remember that little song, little tune of your physics teacher teaching you uh, a way to remember a particular formula, but that does not mean that you actually learn the concept behind the formula, or how to particularly use that formula into concrete problems, how to use that problem to uh, the formula to you solve problems. The learning pyramid model doesn't have enough evidence to back up its findings. There is no empirical evidence, and any attempt to perform model experiments will lead to major methodology problems. Another methodological problem is taking a test, because you need to evaluate who's learning better, right? To use a particular model. So let's imagine a particular case, um, learning a foreign language. And then, as any scientific method, you're going to get a group of volunteers, you're going to split the groups. One group, for example, will only uh, learn with their eyes closed, only listening to information, so then we can measure uh, their, their ability to learn by listening. And another group will not listen to anything, they're just going to have books and be reading vocabulary. All right, so then you get two groups together and apply a test. But then the test has to be the same test for everybody. And obviously, if your test is a written test, the people who are reading the book will have a higher grade. And on the other side, if the test is oral, the people who heard the words being pronounced correctly, uh, these are the ones who are going to have better grades. Learn as if you had to teach. This problem of level independence actually is a good indicator of improvement in our quality of our studies. Preparing to teach another person is a great learning technique. It will require us to first read and also to understand the content that we have. So the tip that we have here is this. When you learn, imagine that you're going to have to teach someone else about that information. If possible, take part in a study group. Teach, actually teach your colleagues. Share what you learn answer questions that your colleagues will have. Nothing will help you more to absorb information than making mistakes, because it's through making mistakes that real learning happens. This practice will help your learning simply because now you're devoting more resources to your study. When you imagine that you have to teach someone else, now you're being forced into practicing a kind of active reading. Active reading is the very best way to gain knowledge. What you want to avoid is passive reading, just flipping through the content without reflecting on it. And to improve the way you learn and actively read, to use your active reading, you can download a copy of our Arab Academy summary on the book How to Read the Book. You can visit the link arata.se forward slash how to read the book.